Yo, 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 my name is Gakato and I'm here to play some Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm gonna win this match without using Yummy Ruler. Opponent's over there, he's called Nail and I'm totally gonna school ya. Hello everyone and welcome to Dueling with Downton. And today we're gonna talk all things episode 50 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime series. A crazy episode that pits Nail versus Gakato. Overall, despite this episode being a bit over the top and very crazy, quirky, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Because what was given to us was a duel that was entertaining, the character reactions were all golden, and we got some good development in the process. I thought the episode itself carried a vibe that was very comedic at the start, and at times there was some comedy that was very hard to digest. Although saying that, I was laughing throughout most of the episode, at the sheer craziness that was unfolding with the Gaku Ting personality. However, once that gimmick left, what remained was a very respectful, serious tone and vibe with the episode that really did help push all the characters involved forward and made it all the more enjoyable. Now, Neil has never been presented within this series as being disrespectful, nor does he show any signs of disrespect towards Gakuto, despite this change of persona right in front of him. I like the fact that they made a small fake out in him being disrespectful, with him basically discarding one of his maximum pieces. Kind of saying that, you know what, I don't need maximum to win against someone like Gakuto. Roman was a character that got kind of faked out by this and thought that was the reason as to why he chose to sacrifice one of his maximum pieces. But this does not turn out to be the case. This turns out to be part of his strategy which I thought was rather smart and rather cheeky of the show. The only thing that Neil does remotely disrespectful within this episode was make a few confused faces or odd expressions. And to be honest, how could you blame him when faced with that thing? But once that thing had left, Neil started to show more of a genuine respect towards Gakuto, even stated that he enjoyed the duel overall, and that enjoyment could have stemmed from his overconfidence being shattered. It's safe to say that Neil might have felt really overconfident going into this duel, considering he had a very powerful maximum monster at his disposal. But with the duel ending in the draw, this probably shook Neil up a little bit, probably made him question his stance of being possibly overconfident and knowing that Gakuto probably couldn't do much against him. Then again, you could probably say that Neil just didn't really care and just wanted to do his job and make Yuka proud. Who knows at this point? And lastly, seeing him use Tribute of the Doom was great, because I love seeing Legacy Monsters come back, but we need to see more Legacy Spell and Trap cards, and this one is a cool one. Now before we talk about Gakuto's character, let's first talk about Roman, as her involvement within this episode I thought was brilliant. I loved all of her different emotions being expressed with her facial expressions and body language, but at the same time, her trying to comfort Gakuto and saying that he is at least a little bit distinguished, I thought was quite enlightening, as her character probably felt a little bit of nerves moving for her match against Roa last episode. Of course, it's very similar. Gakuto is now on this grand stage within this final. His team is relying on him. And of course, he's facing off against the overwhelming force that is Nail. So Gakuto is probably nervous, as well as the fact is Gakuto is blaming himself for not being distinguished enough, in that being the reason as to why Ranze left him. And he's trying to prove her wrong, saying that he is more distinct, distinguished than Nail. So it's a bit of a personal rivalry here. And like with Roa versus Roman, that was quite personal as well for different reasons. Roman probably had a bit of nervous nerves running through her body when going off against Roa because her team depended on her to get the points back to level. So yeah, honestly, uh, I like the fact that she did try to comfort Gakuto, probably just her kind, sweet, wholesome nature that prompted her to do so, but then again, it was awesome. Plus, her just general reactions from seeing Gaku Ting, I thought was brilliant. Her like pulling her hair out, getting mad and crazy and confused, always awesome. Over the past four episodes or so though, we have seen Rook and Roman build more of a connection with them being on the same team. This I did like, because it carries over within this episode as well. 
their relationship so far within Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 started off really rocky as they had the whole kind of traitor situation back in arc 1. Which I felt like the show never really tried to show any signs of those two characters connecting in a more of a positive light. Yes, we had the whole Arasa type of situation in the Maximum arc, but apart from that, these two characters, Rook and Roman, haven't had much time to converse or connect. Except for these past four episodes within this current story arc. If we look at the way that Rook managed to get through to Geta and Ushio, and explain to them that Roa does in fact care about them. And the fact that in this episode itself, Rook states that Gakuto is doing well in keeping sane throughout this strong, tough, difficult situation going up against Neil. And states that, you know what, he's proud of Gakuto and he thinks Gakuto is amazing for keeping calm. Now all of those little lines, all of those actions that we've seen from Rook and those interactions that she's had with Rook Roman has gained a lot more respect from Rook in some form of capacity. It might not be a massive amount, but there is still that, that, that little bit of respect there. In fact, Rook is an idiot and Roman knows this, but sometimes he can be better. And again, Roman understands that as well. The more and more they interact, the closer and closer they grow as friends, rebuilding that connection they had at the start of the first arc back when the traitor wasn't really a subject of talking point. And really quick again about Rook's character, we got more hints about there being a possible Rook within himself, maybe like a personality disorder, as he states every Rook within him was giving Gakuto a standing ovation. So we get more weird mysteries surrounding Rook's character, which are always fun to speculate upon, hey? Oh well, maybe we'll find out more in the next episode when Rook goes up against Yuga. That should be fun. So yeah, Roman didn't really offer much in terms of plot progression, but her presence was highly enjoyable and I'm glad they used her character the way they did within the episode. Okay then, so this Gaku Ting thing was hilarious. And yes, I can see how it could be perceived as offensive to some people. But seeing how this was brought up within the episode, makes it all the more enjoyable, as his action taken by Gakuto was misjudged on his part. It led to him making a mockery of his family name, bringing shame and dishonour to it, which in turn paved the way for Gakuto's character development. And I do love myself some character development within any anime series. I also thought the fact that the founder of the Sogetsu style his design looking just like Gakuto, I did think was a bit weak and uninspiring slash uncreative. However, it does make somewhat sense when looking at it from a child's perspective. When you're young and you're struggling to see how you yourself can improve in something that you're trying to do, seeing someone who looks similar to you or that you look up to creates a fake image of them in your mind. So maybe Gakuto is just hallucinating that the original creator of the Sogetsu style is looking like him because they're from the same family bloodline. Or maybe he has actually seen a photo and they do actually look identical. Just the difference is, the original leader found that the Sugetsu style is wearing a Naruto headband. So while I do think it was uncreative, uninspirative, I don't think that them looking the same is all that unreasonable because of the reasons I've just stated. You know, they're from the same family line and Gakuto could just be hallucinating and envisioning what he believes the founder of the Sugetsu style could in fact look like because he'd never seen him before. However, I honestly can say that after this episode, I can see Gakuto in more of a positive light if they continue to use his character as this fearless, brave warrior that charges at any opponent and stands strong in what he believes in moving forward, despite how overwhelmingly powerful his opponents seem in the future. If they revert back to this Gaku Ting thing, I hope they don't, then of course his respect from me as an audience member will plummet. But if they keep him as a steadfast, resilient, proud warrior slash character that's also quite honourable, then of course I'm going to like him. 
Ranze also was battling her own feelings, as she was commentating a lot on Gakuto's actions, seemingly disappointed with his Gaku Ting gimmick, but then again seemed happy, and gained more respect for Gakuto as he showed more of a drive, more of a seriousness from his character. Ranze to me did kind of feel a bit like a typical Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's fan member. Disappointed, like going, oh my god, Gakuto, what are you doing? Why are you doing this Gakuto thing? But then also being like, yeah, Gakuto, your development is amazing. Keep it up. Go on, you can win it. But yeah, I mean, she got inspired. And afterwards, she decided that Gakuto was worthy of her kind of presence once again. But honestly though, seeing Ranze flip-flop at the moment throughout this entire arc was just another element within this episode and the arc itself that really didn't need to be present, if I'm perfectly honest. His only purpose served was to push Gakuto into becoming a better version of himself, which I think we could have done in a more of a creative and different way anyway, but then again, I still love Ranze's character all in all, so she's great. Maybe not make a runoff to somebody else in the next arc though, because she might become a getter 2.0. Just saying. The duel itself I thought was very smart and well thought out, as we already knew or could predict the outcome because it was very obvious because of the point system and the way that that works, as well as the episode 51 summary hinting at a draw between the two. However, this duel surprised me because it was a lot more enjoyable as it was more of a development phase for Gakuto, but even that pushed to one side, the duel itself, the strategy, the planning, thought process that went in from each character was very much enjoyable when partnered up with those visual effects to make it all the more glorious. Seeing how Gakuto understood Neil's maximum and planned against it as a counter strategy, while Neil also knew roughly what Gakuto was thinking slash planning and worked to counter that. They each kind of counteracted each other, which then again shows a good level of character understanding from one another, as well as showcasing just how smart and easy they can plan a strategy and move forward with it, and while also displaying their skills as a duelist. This draw does not hurt either character. It doesn't make Neil look bad or horrible because of the way they built Gakuto up at the end, and this duel makes Gakuto look better because he's managed to take down someone like Neil as well as draw against a maximum without having one himself. Yes, the way that he did it with the effects and having all the yummy rulers and other rulers and stuff within his graveyard was a little bit BS, but hey, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, so we're gonna have that type of thing as a plot thread. So I'm not gonna trash that too much. The animation throughout the episode looked amazing, especially when some of the shots had that slightly darker tones or the lines across them to show more seriousness, I thought was great too. And another great visual effect was that deflection of White Dragio's attack when Gakuto was bouncing off his emblem, using it as a shield and deflecting it back at Neil. This visual kind of reminded me of the trap card um, draining shield, and I really like using that trap card. And finally, Roa was great here too as he made us laugh by asking Neil why he's now using the new Providence hairstyle while brushing it and helping him fix up his do. Plus that line he stated about sending his best friend Geda to help Arata and Schrodinger uh, does actually speak volumes as to Roa's development from the last episode. It helps reinforce that as well. Plus I also forgot that Geda was a good hacker. So yeah, Geda's just come from this background character that wasn't that important to being very integral into the main story. Not quite sure I'm okay with that, because I'm not really bothered by Geta, but hey, every other side character has had a chance to shine within Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, so let's give him a bit of spotlight, shall we? But we also help reinforce that development from Roa and the rest of his band members. Plus, Geta probably feels more important and happier now, maybe a little bit more on the equal footing, because Roa has finally asked him for help. Overall, this episode I thought was great, and I want to hear your thoughts of this episode in the comments down below. If anything I've said you disagree with, or you think I've got wrong, of course, feel free to debate me. But remember to stay respectful to each other, and of course, everyone else. But with that said and done, hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have, hit that like button, and uh, yeah, 
have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't, and uh, catch you next time. Alligator, Martinet, goodbye.